Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye here with you today to talk about another popular question. A lot of beginners and amateurs and hobbyists coming up in regards to camera lenses. What is the major difference between fixed or constant aperture lenses versus variable, or I like to call them float lenses? Let's break it down quickly. Let's talk about it. Let's go. Talking, I'm going to throw up two examples, mainly from the Canon and Nikon side, since this is pretty much the uh, the common question coming from these DSLR users. And you really have to define what is a fixed aperture, what is a variable aperture. And essentially, it's it's really easy to understand. If you guys have any questions, ask those down below. You know, as you're listening to this video. But essentially, there are two different things. So you have a lens that is typically smaller, more portable, more affordable and it has a variable or float aperture. Typically, your heavier, more professional, larger, better in low light lenses are, are your uh, constant or fixed aperture lenses. Now, for example, I'm gonna specifically talk about variable or float aperture lenses, and I'm gonna do them on the Canon and Nikon side. And the easiest way to do this uh, is to look in your bag right now, especially if you, you don't know what I'm talking about. And if you have a kit lens, take that out. Typically, that is your Nikon or Canon 18 to 55 or 18 to 135, 155 or whatever lens, and you're going to see a lot of things on it. I'm going to pop a picture up here of both uh, both lenses. It, you you know on these lenses they'll typically have the information on the inside or the front of the ring. You'll see it on the the uh, the little wheel outside, and you'll see that it has a lot of numbers on it. But typically, pay attention to once again I'll point to the arrows uh, into these pictures. Pay to the uh, to the 3.5 to 5.6. Well, what is that? That has two different apertures. What does that mean? So what that means is at 18 millimeters, you at your or your widest focal length, it is 3.5. So you can use 3.5 to f22. It doesn't matter. But the problem with the, these variable lenses is not problem per se. But the thing you get with that is as you're zooming into your focal length. So as you're getting to your uh, your 55 millimeter mark on those lenses you are going to be at a minimum of 5.6 of your f-stop because as you're zooming in, you're losing light because that's how the lens works. It has a little bit of less elements. So at your widest setting, you have that 3.5. At, uh, at your closest setting, your more telephoto setting on the lens, so 55, you're at your 5.6. The easiest way to see this is to right now set your camera in aperture mode and to essentially zoom your lens. Just zoom your lens in and out. You're gonna notice the numbers trickling up and down, up and down, up and down, and you're seeing where you can go. This is the this is how those variable aperture lenses works. Widest length, you get the the best, the most shallow f-stop that you can, but as you zoom in, you lose light. That is the biggest con is using these lenses in lower light situations if you need to go telephoto wise, is that you know you are stuck with a deeper f-stop and it's harder to get. Yes, you can raise your ISO and everything like that to compensate, but you're already it is more difficult to shoot in lower light with those lenses, as I would say. So one of my best advices for using these lenses is to set them kind of towards their, their widest focal length and just kind of deal with it as if it's a prime if you really need the low light capabilities. So on the other side, it is your constant, your fixed aperture lenses. Your, for example, your commonly here, your f 2.8s, your f4s, 1.8s, 1.4s, all those kinds of things. I'm gonna pop those pictures up on the screens as well from the Nikon and Canon side, and I'll point the arrows to where those are and what you can look for. And essentially is no matter where you are in the zoom realm, and especially if you have a, uh, a, a prime lens. So to reiterate, on these fixed constant aperture lenses, no matter what zooming you're gonna get, your 24s to 70s, uh, your 70 to 200s, your 16 to 35, 14 to 24, 17 to 55s for the most part. If you see, and it, they're typically on the Nikon side, always on the body. Once again, I'll show you that in the photo. And on the Canon side, it can be on both the camera, on the front of the lens, or on the body as well, or around the, the ring up front. So you'll know what you're looking for as you know this. So no matter where you're at in your focal length, you're gonna get that constant f2.8, that 1.8, that two, you know, that uh, F4. And the biggest perks are is that they are built extremely well. They're more durable than their younger counterparts, even in the same focal lengths. And they shoot much, much better clarity-wise, image-wise, and better in low light. 
That's why they also cost more, which I guess is the con for that, but you're also paying for quality, getting more consistent work. So overall, just to recap once again, your fixed focal lengths, it's just gonna be one f-stop number, f2.8, f4, primarily on your zoom lenses, and going to your uh, your variable or your float apertures, you're gonna see these 3.5s, the 5.6, 3.5s, the f4.5, 5.6, 6.3, etc. You know what you're getting. Eric Ross of the Gautier, I thank you so much for watching this video and I hope I really helped you understand because it really you really don't need to go in depth in this answer. As I said, try the example, set your camera, your camera into aperture mode and move in and out and you'll see what I mean if you have a variable lens like a 3.5 to 5.6. Easiest explanation I could show you and tell you and I hope it really helps you out. If you don't be intimidated that you always have to buy an F2.8 lens, you absolutely do not. It just, as you go down the road, it is what you what you can or what you, I don't want to say you should, it's what more pro, serious photographers aspire to buy. That's all I got. Eric Rossi, if you have any questions, please ask those down below. I'll do my best to help you. But I think I answered this question pretty well throughout this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos and give us a quick like, thumbs up. You know, just, just because it's a day of the week.